Uh, I manage money for a living. My background is engineering, computer science, finance. I believe that computers ought to do a lot of work, but not all, because they're not infallible. And humans should get involved, and they're sure not infall infallible, but if you can get the best of both working together, you can achieve a lot. And uh, so my approach is, is to find out what uh, kinds of equities make sense to own at the right time. Now, the right time is the key issue here. Not so much what equi equities. I think we're all probably pretty good, pretty good stock pickers. You guys have all, you know how to do your research. Some of you are technicians, some of you are fundamentalists. I'm both. I probably lean more toward technicals than I do fundamentals, but I never buy a stock because of fundamentals. I never buy a stock because of technicals. I buy them when they both align. Best fundamentals, best technicals. But you know, that's not the whole story. How many of you have owned really good stocks and lost money on them? <laughs> you see, there's a problem. The problem is, is that bull markets are great for everybody. Almost everything goes up. And in bear markets, it's almost bad for everybody. Almost everything goes down. So if you are like our illustrious former Fed chairman said yesterday, that all of you are just really buy and hold people anyway, and that uh, that's the only way you can really make any money in the market, I think that's, uh, I would take issue with Mr. Greenspan. When we hit the bear market in 2008 and it dropped 50% and you were buy and hold, and, let's, and it didn't, but let's just say that it, it, uh, the market went up by 10% from that bottom in March of 2009. You know how many years it take you to recover? 7.2 years. And you could say, well, but I got back. No, you didn't. You lost seven years. You just lost it. So uh, a little over a year ago, I began, well, first of all, the system I've developed is very complex. I spent over $4 million on it, my money. I've got over 2.8 million lines of code in it. It's a very impressive system. But that's not why you would want to use it. You only want to use something if it works. But one of the things that I, um, I began exploring was why is it that bad why is it that good stocks don't do well in bad markets? And I began looking at, that kind of led me down the path of saying, well, maybe I should look at what the market's doing and then look at the stocks I want to hold to hold the right stocks in the right market. And that led me to a point where I have developed, a, an, a, I guess, an additional algorithm that I put in my system that we started trading last November. And I'm going to take you through that. But the point here is this. How many of you don't think that there's not a bear market in our future? Don't think there is one. <laughs> Do you know how, now this is a rhetorical question. Do you know how many years, I think I've got a slide on here so I don't want to repeat a lot of this. How, how long it is on average from bear market to bear market? Four and a half years. How long has this bull market been running? Six and a half years. Do you know the longest period of time ever in history between bear market corrections that's ever occurred? Eight years. How long are we into this one? Six and a half. How much is left in that eight years? A year and a half. Are we going to have a bear market in the next year and a half? I don't know. Are the odds increasing that we will? They sure are. So I began looking at how the market and stocks behave based on the market that existed at any one time. Did a lot of research on that. 
And I discovered a number of things. One is the market only exists in three kinds of conditions, only one at a time. The market is either in a bull mode, a neutral mode, or a bear mode. So let's see where we think it is. Not what it's going to do next week, not what it did last week. What is it right now? What is it today? How many of you think that it's in a bull mode? Okay. How many of you think it's in a bear mode? How many of you think it's neutral? And how many of you haven't got a clue? <laughs> how do you know? You know, you, you come in and you listen to these guys like me pontificate about what's going to happen or might happen or whatever it may be, hoping to glean some something of value out of your valuable time of sitting here. And I have a tremendous amount of respect for you taking that time. So I'm going to try to leave you with some information that you can use. I have developed, and no, it's not available to anyone else, but you can, if you do enough work, get close to what I have developed, and I'm going to show you what I've done, that will tell me exactly what the market is doing. Now, you might think, Put it another way. Last time you were listening to CNBC, and they were, they were interviewing some big name, and they were talking about what the market's going to do. Do you notice that they never ask, what's the market doing? They will show you what the market has done. They will show you then what some really smart guy supposedly thinks the market's going to do next month, next year, two years, five years, whatever it may be. They don't talk about where the market is. Why? Because isn't it just obvious that we all know what the market is doing right now? And yet I just asked this audience. And there was a lot of disagreement on what the market's doing right now. Okay? So I went back and I did a 10-year uh, multiple, well, actually more than that, 10 uh, back test with this idea that I had come up with. We did hundreds of thousands of tests on it. I have an R&D staff, and, and we ran simulations, computerized simulations, blind studies. And I discovered that if I would blind the computer to only know where the market was at that instant, not look forward one day, and trade according to where the market was at that instant, I was able to improve my ability to make money in the market dramatically. And so I began developing a methodology for how to measure where we are. Right now, we are 1.82% above neutral. What do you do with that? You wouldn't do anything with that. What I do with that, that says to me, I want to be fully invested in fundamentally strong, uptrending stocks. Where does the market normally run? It normally runs about 4 to 5% above neutral. What the heck is neutral? I take a long view of the market. I calculate a moving average, long term. You can do this. Pick, pick whatever long term you want. And then I run a band around that long term. Now this one gets a little more hard for you to do, but you can do it with the math. I calculate what's called an expected move around that, that moving average. And that expected move is based on a Black-Scholes formula. And if you don't know what Black-Scholes is, you can go look it up. But it's basically a way to forecast on, from a probability standpoint how much whatever you're going to study is going to move up or down in whatever period of time you want to study 67% of the time. So I have that band. I'm going to show that to you in a moment. So now I have the ability to know exactly what the market's doing every day. It's either bull, neutral, or bear. Here's another thing I discovered. We're going to start here in six minutes. I, is there people? I don't want to start with people still coming in. All right, here we go. What happened up here? Will? Have I got Will? Ah, great. Hang on. Hang on.
Come on. Okay, here we go. So, did you know the following? I hope I don't have to stand up here to do Okay. During the last 115 years, the market experienced two secular bull markets. Only two. There's only been two secular bull markets in history. Uh, the average gain, 750%. Average amount of time, 17 and a half years. The current bull market is six and a half years old. We talked about that. This could be the third secular bull market, but nobody knows. We won't know for another four and a half years. Why? Because it takes 10 years to define a secular market. If we're in the midst of a bull market, that means that the Dow in about 11 years would be at 53,000. Anybody want to miss out on that? No. The stock market could triple from where it is today. But did you also know the following? A bear market correction occurs every four and a half years. I told you about that. It drops about 38% on average. There's not been a bear market in the last six years. I'll get my pointer here somewhere. Okay. And um, the longest stretch between bear market corrections has been eight years, which I told you about. The last two bear markets dropped 50%, more than 50. So are you prepared for another bear market? Are you? Are you Who in here is prepared for the next bear market? Good for you. Good for you. Two. So I'm going to safely assume that the majority of you are not prepared for the next bear market. There's one on the way. Here's a conundrum you've got. It's extremely foolish to sit on the sidelines while the market triples. I'm going to use another word. That's stupid. You don't want to miss out on that. Without the right kind of investment, I'm going to try to take you through that today in the next 45 minutes. Uh, you've got 100%, I believe, 100% certainty of the market dropping 40% or more in the next bear market. And there's a solution. It's a common sense approach. Okay. You see this uh, line here? It's a 15, I'm sorry, a 10 year uh, chart of the market. This down here is what I call my heat map. If it's red, it's bearish. If it's gray, it's neutral. If it's green, it's bullish. So what is my heat map? I look at the historical bias. I'm, I'm sure you, those in the back can't see this, but this little green wiggly line up here is the actual market. You'll notice it turned red there, turned red here. This little kind of band you see here is the neutral zone. Now when you're up close, you can see all that. It's great detail. And basically what I'm tracking is the S&P 500. And right now, the current market bias is a bull bias. If it was not, it would say either neutral or bear. If it's bear, then I'm looking at the SH. That's what this bar is right here, being green. Right now it's red. SH, what is the SH? It's an inverse ETF. Now, how many of you don't know anything about inverse ETFs? Come on now. How many don't know anything about them? A big bunch of you don't. So I'm going to take you through some of that here in just a little bit. I also look at the S&P 400, the NASDAQ, the Dow, the Russell, and their inverses. The inverse of the S&P 400 is the MYY. Of the NASDAQ, the PSQ. Of the Dow, it's the DOG, D-O-G. And of the Russell 2000, it's the RWM. So I am watching those to see how they are tracking according to the market bias analysis. So we are, when I ran this, we were 1.61% uh, above neutral. We're right now about 1.8 something above neutral. So the market is beginning to climb a little bit above, nicely above the uh, neutral zone. I look at all of the, sect the, the major market indexes, I look at the sectors, telecom, basic materials, on and on and on, and, and the inverses of those as well. And I look at uh, time cycle forecasts. What's the time cycle forecast? There's a mathematical algorithm that, that I developed. In fact, Bloomberg came to me and asked me to put it on their Bloomberg terminals worldwide. And it basically takes cycles of time, waves, if you will, and calculates uh, 
pricing pressure on whatever you want, any stock, any index, and the like. And so I look at that. I'm not going to get a lot of detail about that. Okay. So when we're about, here's the whole strategy. Here's what you can do. Yeah. I'm going to be brutally honest with you. I would love for you to say, you know, Mike, I'd like for you to have some of my money to run this way. I'd like that kind of diversification. I'd love to do that. I'd love to do business with you. But I'm going to show you what I do, which is a lot of what you can do. Okay? You've got to come up with your methodology for knowing what the neutral zone is. What did I tell you? You take a long-term uh, moving average of the market and develop a range that you're comfortable with, plus or minus whatever you think is a good percentage around that, and consider that your neutral zone. If you're above the neutral zone, you're in a bull bias. It doesn't matter what else is going on. You take the strongest, fundamentally strongest stocks that are trending higher, and it doesn't matter what you hear on CNBC. It doesn't matter what the Fed's going to do. It doesn't matter what Russia's going to do. It doesn't matter what Obama's going to do. It doesn't matter on any of those things. You want to be long and strong in the market as long as you're in a bull bias. Is every trade going to work? No. Are some of them going to stop out on you? Yeah. But you're on the right side of the trade. Okay. When it... Okay. I just said all that, so I'm not going to repeat it. In the neutral zone, you want to stop adding new positions. This is what I did. No more buying. No more adding. Okay. The second thing you want to do is capture profits. Your goal... Now, this scares some money managers to death, particularly the big ones. Your goal is to be 100% cash by the time you get out of the neutral zone. Okay? I am not afraid of cash. My clients are not afraid of cash. Do we make any money in cash? No. What else do we not do? We don't lose a boatload of money. Okay? So we're in the neutral zone. I use tight trailing stops. I want to be 100% cash by the time I get out of it. Now, if, you're, if the market falls below the neutral zone, you're in. By the way, you might think that the market goes from, over time, goes from a bull cycle to a bear cycle. And from a bear cycle to a bull cycle. You might think that happens. That doesn't happen. That never happens. You think it does, but it never happens. Well, what does it do, Mike? It goes from a bull mode to neutral to bear. It goes from bear to neutral to bull. So you watch and see what it's doing. Now, you might say, well, I'm going to get whipsawed doing what you're doing, Mike. You're in and out of the market. My average hold time is 108 days. And that's in a bull cycle. The point of it is, is that even good stocks will fall off from time to time in a bull market. So you're going to have to still trade. I'm going to show you how I trade here in a minute. But the key is, is to be on the right side of the trade. You want to be 100% invested in inverse ETFs. Now, I know those of you who know a little bit about ETFs and inverse ETFs, you might say, well, that's really risky. Some ETFs are really risky. Some of them you don't want to touch with a 10-foot pole. You don't want to put any money in. They're not liquid. I'm talking about the major market ETFs, inverse ETFs. Okay? Only broad market, highly liquid inverse ETFs. Focus on both index and sector inverse ETFs. Monitor the trade risk and intelligent stop loss. Okay, what the heck is that? You buy stock. It's going up goes up in a nice little range. We call that in our world the buy zone. And it fluctuates, but it stays in that range. Ah, then good news comes out. Maybe it's earnings report, whatever, acquisition, whatever. And it bounces up outside that normal range. The next zone above a normal range we call a hold zone. You don't buy there, but you hold on to what you got there. If news really keeps pumping in that's really good about this stock, it'll actually juice itself up higher into an overbought condition. 
Now, do you think a stock will stay, typically, you think stocks stay in an overbought condition forever? No. What do they do? They come back down. And what do you do? You lost that profit. So I'm all about capturing profit when it moves out of that normal buy zone. So I have developed a methodology where I set my stops to become more aggressive as it moves up. You can do that. I'm not saying that you can do it exactly the way I do. I've got so many thousands of man hours and dollars and whatnot in what I'm doing. But the point of it is, is there are a lot of tools out there on the market where you can analyze a stock and know whether it's becoming overbought or not. Maybe not to the same degree that I do, but you can do that. Okay. So, here's the typical money manager. I won't ask for a show of hands of how many money managers are in the audience, and I'm not trying to insult anybody. But here's the typical money manager. I am not a typical money manager. This is pretty nice. Oops, I can't even read that. Up 45% right here. You're loving this guy or gal. Then it's down 50. And so you're wanting to get out. You call your money manager up and say, what the heck's going on? We were up 40. Uh, and now we're down 50. What, what's going on? I went out and the money manager says what to you? Hold on. Hold on. It'll come back. Hang on for the long term. Have you ever heard that one? Hang on for the long term. Horse hockey, as we say in Texas. I don't want to hang on for the long term. I want to hang on for profits. If you're not making me profits, you're not doing the job you need to do. No money manager wants to hear that. Now, do I make a profit every day? I don't. So if, someone, if I have a client that calls me up, which I've never had yet, and says, okay, you made me a profit yesterday, but we're down today. I want out. I'm going to say, well, it's probably a good idea for you to get out. So it's not, it's not every day. But you've got to look at that trend. Not months, certainly not years to wait. Okay? I like to be measured kind of on a monthly basis myself. So it goes back up. And the, your money manager says, see, I told you. If you'd hold on, we'd get back. And you did. Five to seven years later. So you should ask your money manager, what are you going to do with those lost years? How do I get those back? How many of those five to seven years have I got left in my life? And it starts climbing back up. You're way up here nicely just before the next bear market. And maybe it goes down 50% or more. Now, here's what I do. Can we guess what the chart looks like that I'm going to bring up? I look at the bull cycle, neutral, bear cycle, neutral, bull cycle, neutral, bear cycle. And I change my strategy. And I recommend that you change your strategy to fit the market. Okay? A buy and hold strategy never adjusts for changes in the market. The best you're going to get in a buy and hold is if you're really, really smart and you're changing, getting really good stocks that are tending to stay up more than others go down, you'll lose less. Is that an objective you want to have? I want to lose less? Nobody wants that. You don't want that. You shouldn't accept that. Okay? Therefore, buy and hold. Value investing. Oh, I had a, had a gentleman come by the other day, yesterday, and was talking to me, and he said, he said, okay, you buy a stock for $40, and it suddenly reverses on you and goes down to, to 20 What do you do? And I said, well, first of all, I wouldn't hold on to it while well, it went down to 20 He said, you wouldn't? I said, no. He says, but you just bought it last week, and now it's, 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 it's so much more valuable now because you can, you can buy it now, this, the same number of shares for half the price. This person was serious, okay? And I said, I cannot tell you how foolish I think that strategy is. I don't believe in value investing. I believe in profits. I don't care what the stock is, except I want good, strong fundamentals. I don't want to buy crap. I want it to be trending higher. 
but you can take the best stock in the world and it's just a piece of paper you want to hold on to it only as long as it's making you money okay so here's what I do here's my my chart I do the same thing I'm up just like the the buy and hold would be actually right now I'm doing about twice as good as the market so I'm up about 200 percent over the market not 200 percent above but I'm twice as good as the market still uh, here you can see that the market went down we went up because we went in inverse ETS we go flat here flat here now the bull market takes over <clears throat> and I, I ride the same exact market I'm just trying to emulate exactly what the market did but now I'm up here <clears throat> I'm significantly higher I don't start over back down here at the bottom I don't have to lose all of this movement down to here and now finally I'm getting back into a bullish mode you've lost this whole time frame and profit for doing that so I go to neutral zone I, I get I, I go back to neutral zone at the bottom of the bear go into the into fundamentally strong uptrending stocks in the bull cycle and I repeat that and repeat that and I get a far better return so here's the deal I wish I would have asked this earlier does anyone so don't answer this does anyone in here fear the next bear market I don't and I'm not saying that to be arrogant not at all I'm not trying to be arrogant I'm trying to teach you how you can make money in the stock market and not be afraid of a bear market all you've got to do is enough work or hire me to do it for you to tell you what market we're in now you might say well Mike who made you God's greatest market prognosticator I'm not a great market prognosticator <clears throat> I have built a software system that I have a lot of faith in and I have back tested it extensively and I believe that even though the market in the future will not equal the market we've had in the past the odds are very high that it will not radically change from the standpoint of only being in a bull cycle a neutral cycle or a bear cycle forever it's in one of those three it's how you measure it. <clears throat> So, never fear a bear market again. Always use a strategy that fits the market. Take what the market gives you. If you have a money, money manager right now, or if you're self-directed, ask yourself or your money manager this question. What are you going to do for me in the next bear market, and how will you know when it begins? Just ask them. See what kind of an answer. Ask yourself that question. move up with the, when the with the market in bull cycles move up with the market using inverse ETFs in uh, in bear cycles and you generate profits in both bull and bear now don't hear me wrong here this doesn't mean it's a foolproof always be profitable strategy what I'm trying to teach you is how to be on the right side of the market when you're trading if you're buy and hold I can't help you you're going to get crushed in the next bear market don't do that don't go through another 2008 I would rather you go to cash in the next bear market at least know when one is then to write it down here's what will happen the next bear market begins the market drops 10 percent and Gartman comes on and says that's all it's going to be and so you hang on no offense to Gartman, he's a great guy. He's a great guy. He drops another fifteen percent, and somebody else comes on and says, "Well, it's not going to go any lower. It's you know we've we bottomed out here," and the market pops up a little bit, and you think that's over, and then drops another ten percent, and you find yourself in a situation where now you're stuck. You think, and your money manager will tell you, or your wife will tell you, or your husband will tell you. We don't want to get out now. It's bound to come back eventually. You've all had those arguments with yourself. You know you have. Okay? I'm just saying, wouldn't you, when you're sitting down there at that bottom and you look back, and this is a little unfair to say this to you because I know you know this, you think, boy, I wish I'd have gotten out last month. Right? 
Well, you don't know how to get out. You know, buying is easy. Selling is what's hard. It's hellaciously hard. So you set, you set up your rules. I have a saying. You make the rules. The rules make the trades. You don't make the trades. You get your rules. And you set them up. And you let them make the trades. Okay. So here is 2006, 7, 8, and 9. Somewhat color coded. Now, this is to explain to you how an inverse ETF works. Because all of us can make money in a bull market. It's how we make money in a bear market that matters. So I want to focus on this a little bit. And I use inverse ETFs. I don't short the market. Okay? So here's how this works. Here is the S&P 500, 2006, happy days. 2007, halfway through, happy days. Drops down, comes back up. Oh, see? Mildred, I told you we shouldn't have sold there. It came right back up. You're in good shape. Then it starts to go down. You're thinking, oh, here it is, just where it was a few months ago. It keeps going down. A little false move up. You get your hopes up again that you're, you're not in this bear market strategy. You all remember this. This was your life a few years ago. Then it bounces, goes down, goes down, goes down, and you're thinking, what the hell am I going to do? Now, I'm going to show you the SH in that same time frame. You could almost say it looks like the inverse of the market. But you could almost say that. So here's what we do. When the market starts doing this, and we get the trigger right up in here, we switch into inverse ETFs, and we get out of our long positions in stocks, and we buy the SH. It comes up to here, and it hits a little neutral zone. We pick up, let me back up, we pick up on the bull side here, and we ride that for a few months. And then we hit another sell-off, and we get on into the inverse ETFs, goes back into a neutral zone. And then we have the come to Jesus session. And we get in here, hopefully, as soon as we can in the inverse ETFs, and we're up here when the market is down here, and which of those would you rather be in? So that's my strategy. That can be your strategy. <clears throat> okay. Here's how I buy a stock or a market or an ETF. They all go through some cycle. And each one of these cycles, this is as the stock moves up and price comes back down. It's just to be a, it's just simulating. They go from a watch zone into a buy zone, into a hold zone, and into an overbought zone. And I look at that on every stock and every market. And I buy in the buy zone. I never buy in the hold zone. I never buy in the overbought zone. How do I get out? I use stops. How are my stops set? I use a combination of a 200-day moving average and an expected move. What's the expected move? It's how much the stock is likely to move against me in the upcoming five trading days and still stay within its normal trading range 67% of the time. That's a black Scholes one. Okay? Now, to be somewhat self-serving here, you're looking at me and you're saying, you know, Mike, I like managing my own money, and I love my manager that I've got now, and with all due respect, I don't want to give you any of my money to manage. That's okay. I think you're wrong about that, but that's okay. But, Mike, I'd sure like to have some of those tools that you use. 
Now, I don't have a booth out here. I own two companies. So if you want some of these tools, you go to turnertrends.com. You can write that down and look at it. Try it out. And you've got access to not everything, but most of what I'm showing you here. The expected moves, all that kind of thing. All that stuff. And that's all the sales pitch I'm going to put on that one. In a, in a bear market, we have just the opposite. The market starts going down. We've got a trade risk as well. We've got a watch zone, buy inverse uh, zone. We've got a hold zone, and we've got an oversold zone. And I get out exactly the way I got in on the stocks. I get out of inverse ETFs the same way. And I have a stop loss strategy for that. <clears throat> now, you may be asking yourself, and I don't have time to get in a lot of detail, how the heck does an inverse ETF work? You'd probably like to know that. And I, I wish I had another session to take you through it, but I'll give it to you in a nutshell. Inverse ETFs use a combination of futures, options, not so much options, and swaps. These are financial instruments that allow them to basically short the market. And they're going in and out of those swaps all the time. And their objective is, and they have to comply with because that's how they have defined their ETF, that it is going to simulate, not exact, but simulate the in inverse of what the market's doing or whatever market segment you're looking at. So it's just like a stock, except they're using different vehicles to drive it. You buy it and sell it like a stock. Buy one share at a time if you want to. Okay. So how have we done? Well, I'll read this first. Okay, that's all the time I've got for you to read it. So I'm going to give you the cliff notes. We use simulated trades. We've got blind trading, no human intervention other than equity selection. Past performance does not equal future returns. You've probably never heard that. Trading and management fees are not included. So just exactly what are my management fees? 3%. Holy cow. 3%. Well, you can go somewhere and get 1%. Not with me. You can go get 1% from someone who will ride that, that bear market down right along with you. You're down 30 or 40%. My 3% is going to look really attractive. Okay? Actual results will vary. Had to put this one in. I'm not sure why. Okay. So... Here's a 10-year study plus about six months. Bear market of 2008. This is, again, this is a computer system. Everything from this blue bar, that direction, is a simulation. It's not real. I tried to make it real. We built the program so it couldn't look forward. We did all kinds of things that we could do to make it as real as we could, but I have to tell you, it's not real. The blue is real. Okay? In bear markets, we moved clients into inverse ETFs and cash. It took four years for the market to recover from, uh, four plus years actually, recover from the 2008 debacle, 2009. And uh, using this strategy plus what I've done in the last six months, I'm pretty proud of this. See this little. Nice move here. Six months doesn't prove anything. I, I'm not trying to shy away from that. I've only been running this. I've been in the business a long time, but I've only been running this strategy since November 1 of 2014. So you might say to me, uh, all justification. Mike, that's not long enough for me to believe it works. Fine. I'm just trying my best to show you the methodology that you can use yourself and that I am using. And if it appeals to you enough that you want to put some of your money with me, I would be honored to work for you. But we did 365% better than the uh, market. So far in the last six months, I'm 200% better than the market. Last six months has not been an easy market. I'm up uh, a little over 8%. Market's up a little over 4 Okay. So here are the month-to-month -month stats. Since November. Here are the clients in the middle column. Here's the S&P. 
Okay, December, January, February, March. I didn't like April and May, so far in May. I'm up 8.58% uh, the market's up to 4.32, nearly 200%. Okay. So, I'm going to open for questions here in a moment, right after I ask for your business. So, for a commercial interruption, I'd like to build a bulletproof portfolio for you. We quantify market trend, bull bear or transition. We select the right equities for the right market trend. We quantify risk of trade. We set multi-tiered exit strategies based on individual stock, volatility, and market trends. Our investment strategies are under constant review. I'm not done making this better. Our portfolio has a lower adjusted risk profile than the S&P 500. Our objective is to, is to generate significant returns to both bull and bear markets. And bottom line, better performance with less risk. So, if you like what you've heard, you'd like to know more, you can go by my booth. We're all the way in the back, 525. And we've got some uh, brochures, but I would, we don't have as many as there are people in here so, with us. So, if, uh, you're, only if you're serious about us, but if you're doing some business together, would you pick one up? Now, um, I am, oh, by the way, this afternoon, I'm going to go through a tactical investment strategy for 2015 and 2015 and, and 16. I'm going to cover some of the same things I just did, but I'm going to add some more details to it. Uh, we also got a little handout at the back if you want to pick one up on your way out. Now we've got a few minutes, and I am open for questions. Yes, sir. Oh, the question is, uh, why was there so much difference in, in April? Well. I generally have about 20 positions in my portfolio at any one time. And um, there were a series of stocks that had been really going higher. They pulled back a little bit in April. That's when we pulled our numbers off at the end of April. Wasn't anything changed, nothing significant at all. Another question. Yes, sir. My minimum investment amount is 50,000. Five zero. Yes, sir. Let me explain to you how this works. I've got hundreds of clients. Some got 50, some thousands, some got 100, some got a million, some got two million, some got three, that sort of thing. So here's what happens. Let's say I want to put 5% in Disney. That's one of my holdings. And what I do is, is I can push a button, basically, and it'll go out and earmark all of my clients 5% of their net asset value. And that money gets pulled in, paper money, into a bucket. This is all done by TD Ameritrade. They don't do the trade, but they've set up the algorithm for me to do, use this. So now I've got a pool, a bucket of money, because I'm managing everybody's account individually. This is not a fund. Now I've got a bucket of money that's got 5%. It represents 5% out of everybody's account. And it tells me how much money I've got to buy stock with. So I go out and I buy block uh, purchase of Disney. Those shares all come back into a bucket. Now I've got the paper money and the shares. Before the end of the day, and this is a requirement by TD Ameritrade and the law, I've got to allocate. And so what happens is, is I'll push another button and the shares represented in the bucket by the 5% of each person's account gets allocated back out to every account. Everybody pays exactly the same price. Okay? Uh, yes, sir? When you say 3%, let's say you have 100,000, it's 3% of 100,000, not the profit. Okay, the question is, how is the 3% calculated? It's calculated on net asset value. Now, make sure you understand this. This is called a wrap fee. What that means is, I cover all expenses, trading everything. I, I don't, I, everything except the cost of the shares, which you have to pay for, I pay for all the transactions that go along with that, okay? So, it costs me a certain amount of money to uh, process this all through, um, uh, TD Ameritrade. My net is way less, way less than 
and then I do all the work for you in that regard. Um, in the back, yes, sir. Do you use any leverage ETFs in person? Okay. What I try to do, all ETFs are, have leverage. It's, it's the amount. It's a 1x, 2x, or a 3x. I don't like anything but 1x. So 90% of the time, I'm in 1x. Now, there could be a situation when we go into this next bear market that maybe there's an oil ETF or a uh, 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 technology ETF or one of the smaller ETFs of a sector or a market segment that is particularly attractive. And the only thing they offer is a 2x. I would put some money in it, but I would only put half of what I normally put into any position. But I, I don't like those, so I try to stay away from them. Another question. Yes, sir. The, the, no, I'm not, I'm not shorting anything. When I buy an inverse ETF, it's a long position. It's not a short position. No, it's not going to be treated the same way as a, as a short position would be when you cover it. And by the way, my average hold time is 108 days. You're not going to get a capital gains uh, benefit on any of the trades. With, with all due respect, I hope to make you pay a lot of taxes. Okay. Now, I don't like paying taxes any more than the next guy, but I want to I want to make a lot of money for you that you have that problem. Uh, yes, sir. How do you handle the information that I would need on my taxes? Okay, so how how do you ha how do you how do you know what's going on, right, in in the portfolio? So here's here's how that works. You're going to if if you came by the booth and you said, Mike sold me, I like it. Okay, I want to do it. So here's what would happen. Here are the steps. We have a little form. that has got like six questions on it. And uh, your name, address, how we can contact you. That's all it amounts to. And we're going we're gonna to overnight a packet to you, not because we're in such a hurry, but so that we can track it. So we overnight a packet to you. In that packet, it's got two sub-packets. One is a, is a bunch of boilerplate that, by law, I have to provide to everybody. It tells you all about the kind of business that we're in and on and on and on. And you put that in a file and read it once you read it. And then there'll be a smaller packet of the things you have to fill out. And the things that you fill out are the information necessary to open up a TD Ameritrade account on the institutional side. Now, lots of you have already got TD Ameritrade accounts, but, but, but they're, they're probably retail and not institutional. Um, and it also gives us limited trading authorization. Now, you're, we, you, that comes back to us. We submit that to TD Ameritrade. The account gets opened, and then you fund it. You can either bring in cash, or you can bring in cash and equities. If you've got equities that you want to bring over, it's really smarter for you to bring them over instead of you selling them, because you'll pay a transaction fee when you sell them. If you send them over to, to us to manage, I pay the transaction fee, and you don't have to do that. Now, the account gets set up, the account is opened, and what I'll do is I'll begin. I'm the portfolio manager. I make the decisions. I have a team that works with me, but I make the decisions. And what will happen is, is I will look at the portfolio and the market and decide how much of what we're already in that I want to put you in. It may be none. It may be two or three or four. It may be everything that we've got. But the last thing I want to do is to put you in something that I've got a 30% profit in, and it looks like the market's about ready to roll over, and I put you in it. Everybody else makes money, and you don't. Okay? Now. Once you get your account set up, TD Ameritrade has a great tool for you to use. You get 24-7 access to. You can see what's going on all the time. When I make a trade, the confirm, the email that says this trade was made, goes to you. It's as if you made the trade. I'm just your proxy. I've made it on your behalf. I'm working for you. It's your account, your money. You can start and stop this anytime you want. You have complete control over it. Okay? There's no redemption period. There's none of that kind of stuff. Okay? It's all yours. All the year-end reporting, the tax reporting, all that, TDA, uh, TD Ameritrade provides that to you. So you've got complete control over all that. Another question? Anyone? Yes, sir. Mike, uh, coming up on an RMD, where I'm doing distribution, and you've used uh, Roth IRA and that, where you manage Roth IRA. 
Okay, the question is, with RMD coming up and required minimum distribution, can I, can I manage a Roth RIA, RIA? And the answer is absolutely. We have lots of clients that they come up with required minimum distribution. What we do is we don't calculate that for you, okay? That's a, but, but you will tell us, okay, Mike, I've got to have X number of dollars to, that I've got to take out of the account. What we will do is we will adjust your account so there's enough cash to cover that uh, distribution. So I can roll back from my IRA to a Roth IRA and have to pay the tax on the RMD. Right. And then at that point, then you take over the management, but it goes into TD America. Correct. It all goes into TD Everything you said there is exactly right. Yes, sir. How do you get the reverse ETF website? Okay, you can go to um, uh, Yahoo, um, or Google for that matter, but Yahoo's probably Yahoo Finance, and you can say inverse ETFs, and, and they'll give you a list. There's a it's big list of inverse ETFs. Now, I must caution you. Many of them are extremely thinly traded. You want to be very They will look wonderful. The charts will look great. Here's the thing you want, to, you want to keep in mind. This is where you'll get your butt handed to you, okay? You, getting into a thinly traded inverse ETF is a piece of cake. Getting out is where you're going to get busted because when you want to get out, lots of other people want to get out and the, and the bid ask becomes huge, okay? So you want to make sure that you concentrate only on those into inverse ETFs that have lots of volume. Um, hang on. Yes, sir. I assume that you're in bullish bias. I am right now. Right. What's the primary indicator that would turn you into Okay, here's what has to happen. The question is, what would make me go from a bull bias, which I have right now, to a neutral bias? We are 1.8% above the neutral zone. If we close for a week, at the end of the week, Friday close. If the Friday close is in that neutral zone, I, my bias changes at that moment. So what happens at that moment? So now I've got, I'm, I'm, I'm roughly 95% invested right now. A lot of great stocks, doing really well. And let's just say for the sake of argument, this week it, uh, the market closed inside the neutral zone. What do I do? Well, I'm going to look at each one of the positions and say, you know, this one's kind of been flatlining for a while. We've got some good profit in that. I'm just going to sell it. This one here, this next one, it's really been on a tear. It's got some momentum behind it. I'm going to put a tight trailing stop on that one. I'm going to go through each one individually, looking aggressively at getting out. But I don't just sell across the board. Okay? Because it could bounce right back the next week. Now, if we're in a neutral zone that's a, that is a serious neutral zone, it will last for a few weeks. There's only been one bounce in and back out in the last, um, I don't know, almost two or three years that only lasted one week. So I'm, I'm cautious about taking a knee-jerk reaction in, a, in, in the first bounce into that neutral zone. Uh, yeah, you had another question. Yes, sir. Uh, two things. One, one I, I just want to verify that TD Ameritrade Civic Insurance applies to these accounts. They're what? Uh, they're insurance against. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is right, right. Now, now here's, here's the thing. Okay. My second question yeah. is on the 3%, how is it deal? What is the deal? Okay, on the 3%, I take it out one twelfth of it monthly at the end of the month. Okay? <laughs> Um, any other questions? If not, one last, yeah. Tell me about liquidity. Say I want some money. You want the money, yeah. So here's, here's what would happen. Let's just say, and I've had this happen actually. Uh, the question is, what if I want my money? <laughs> huh? Or part of it. Or part of it, okay. So I have had, I've had one time that I think I can remember. I had a client call me up and say, Mike, I'm terrified of the market. Take me to cash. We did that afternoon. We took him to cash. Um, so if you called me up and you said, um, uh, Mike, um, I want to put half the, my portfolio in cash. Leave it all the way it is, but just take half of it and put it in cash. We'll do it as soon as we can work it out. Now, work it out meaning like in the next few hours. I don't like to just dump shares 
I like to try to kind of pick as good a price as I can to get you out. On the other hand, if you said sell, sell, sell right now, we'll do it. Yeah, it'd take you all of about, for me to, for you to convert that to, to cash in your account, for me, maybe 30 minutes. And then whenever it's cash, I can Yeah, when it's cash, you can, you, can write, you can write a check on it. I mean, it's your account. Listen, folks, this is your money in your personal account. You've all got accounts now at brokerage firms right now, right? It's the same thing. All you're really doing is authorizing me, giving me the ability to do two things in your account, and only two. Don't call me up and say, well, Mike, I've got two accounts. Would you move some money out of this one into that one? I can't do that. I can't take money out of your account to do anything with it except two things. I can trade with it, and I can take out my one twelfth of one of 3% fee. That's all I can do, okay? So you've got control of all the rest of it. You've been a great audience. Thank you. Have a great day.